Intel's got a new patch for their funky chip. Snapdragon's launch is all sorts of quirked up and AMD's been hacked. Oh, prepared to get a lot of details, unfortunately. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, June 20th, 2024, also known as Kyler. Hey, look at me go. I'm older than I want to be. No, I'm not. I'm actually okay with my age. I'm not really insecure about being my mid 30s. 43. You think I'm 43? You're 43. You said so. Do I have the crow's feet to prove that? You said 43. You said uncertain. The number four followed by the number three. I believe you. That's how old I am and how old Intel's processors are is irrelevant to this story because we're gonna talk about the fact that they have a new BIOS patch coming out for their 13th and 14th gen instability issues where they have a new micro code bug fix. We've already talked about this. It kind of got leaked that they were working on a thermal velocity boost bug patch that's supposed to come out on July 19th. But now it's it's actually being rolled out and Intel actually discussing this, calling it out and saying that they, they are going to release this. However, this is not the mainstream fix for the instability that we've been seeing in the i9 processors of the 13900K and the 14900K. However, it is part of the problem. It should actually help to fix quite a bit that is going wrong. So make sure to get your uh, BIOS updating buttons ready for when that rolls out to your motherboard near you in case you are on a 13900K or 14900K and just know that Intel is still working on it. And I'm working on today's video sponsor, but actually mostly Kyler is because he likes to have his butt warm and or chilled. Today's video is sponsored by Autoful and their M6 gaming chair. The M6 gaming chair might be the most feature packed chair currently available. From its ventilated and heated leather seat to its dynamic tracking lumbar support, this chair aims to keep you comfortable during your most intense gaming sessions. Supported by a dual fan system and capable of being powered by a removable battery bank, the in-seat ventilation is perfect for staying cool on a hot day. If you get too cool, the fans also have three adjustable levels so you can pick your perfect strength of airflow. Coupled with the ultra soft porous leather, the M6 offers a cool and comfortable sitting experience. And if staying cool isn't the issue, you're in luck. The M6's dual heating element can also be set to three different levels so you can keep yourself the perfect level of toasty warm when you need to. Once you get your temperature under control, you can focus on the great lumbar support that the M6 has to offer. Audifull includes their dynamic tracking lumbar support that features an adaptive ejection style support support that follows your waist as you sit and move. Additionally, within the lumbar support, you have a height adjustable bar to ensure that no matter your height, your waist is supported. Last but certainly not least, the M6 has the ultra adjustable 60 mechanical armrests. These armrests can adjust up and down, forward and backward, side to side, rotate in and out, angle up at the elbow and recline back with the chair. If you're looking for a new upgrade to your old uncomfortable gaming chair, look no further than the Audifull M6. You can check it out for yourself via the link in the description and as always, a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring today's video. I gotta tell you, I've been sitting down a lot to figure out what exactly is going on with the new Snapdragon chips that launched just a couple days ago. And it turns out that nobody is quite clear on what's happening. I'm currently benchmarking several different systems to get to the root of exactly what's happening on this new launch of Qualcomm onto Windows on ARM. But there's details that are happening like the Snapdragon X Elite is performing exactly the same, whether it's plugged in or unplugged, which is nice to see. But then you have other reports where it's not actually doing that at all. But even in my testing, what I'm finding is that on synthetic benchmarks like this, it is performing quite close when it comes to being on battery or being on AC power. But then when it comes to like real life applications, the difference can be actually pretty staggering, but also not necessarily as bad as if you're on a gaming laptop. So there's, there's some funkiness going on here that isn't quite resolved. And if you go look at Tom's hardware, they have been live blocked their experience with the Snapdragon Copilot Plus laptops, and there's just a bunch of odd quirkiness that's happening. They have misbenchmarked some things like a rendering a 1080p video when they should have been rendering a 4K, which led to the Snapdragons outperforming the Intel and AMD chips by quite a bit, but they corrected that and still showed that the Snapdragon chips are faster. But then there's other reports that it's just Windows is probably the biggest downfall of everything that's happening right now, and that's honestly probably what's 
to blame for the mismatch in terms of being on battery or being on AC power is how Windows is choosing to handle the ARM processor, not necessarily the capability of the ARM processor itself. But that's what happens when you have a brand new ecosystem you gotta support. And that's exactly what Framework is looking to do. They announced that they're actually gonna have a brand new main board to put into one of their laptops, and that is going to be a RISC-V main board that's gonna have four RISC-V cores in case you wanna have the Star 5 JH7110 processor, which is not gonna necessarily beat what is already out there. This is not going to be something that you put in to have the flagship system and highest end performance, but rather something that makes it so that if you have the chassis already from a previous framework laptop and you wanna tinker around with RISC-V, that's gonna be available. Or you could potentially get that little cooler master shell that allows you to put it as like a desktop situation. It's just gonna make it easy, which is the whole point of Framework's mission is to have repairable, accessible, upgradable, configurable components. And so it's not gonna be for everybody, but RISC-V now happening for more people. And Reese, give us deals for more people who watched today's episode of Hot News. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, wouldn't you know it, we've got some deals for you today. Starting off with this Thermalright TLC-12C 120mm fan for only $5.39, making it $30.60 off. That price, no thank you, $5, yes. But then next up, we have this Corsair M75 Air Wireless Ultralight Gaming Mouse, which, you know, styling-wise reminds me a lot about the Logitech Superlight, but it's only $35.99 with the coupon applied, making it $64 off. And then last off, we have this lovely LG Ultra Gear 27 inch 1440p 240 hertz OLED gaming monitor, which I think might be at its all time low at $649.99 with the Newegg Plus exclusive promo code making it $250 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. But in case you were thinking of paying for all of that with Apple's Buy Now Pay Later program, which I like to refer to as Apple Banapple, turns out you're not gonna be able able to do that anymore. Apple canceling this despite it rolling out less than a year ago. And it turns out that the reason they might be doing that is because of increased consumer protection when it comes to these buy now, pay later programs that have taken over the US credit industry. And a lot of that has to do with just clear communication with regards to how refunds work and the entire situation around how buy now, pay later can actually affect consumer policies that are actually protections for people here in the US. So Apple looks like they pulled out a lot of people made the jokes of like oh nobody was paying off their card but it seems like a more likely explanation is the fact that there's going to be increased regulation on this side and apple just didn't want to necessarily play that game and they're probably not going to want to play the game with the hackers who have allegedly hacked them and breached several of their internal tools even having the source code for them so there's three different tools that have been claimed by a specific hacker saying that they have the apple connect sso apple hwe confluence advance and apple macro plug-in source codes. And this is all done by a group known as Intel Broker, who's likely going to put it up for a ransom and demand that Apple paid in order to make sure that none of this gets leaked. We'll have to see if Apple says that this is legitimate or not, or if they're actually going to pay for it, or if the source code is just going to make its way to the internet. However, AMD also being susceptible to that exact same group. Kind of funny that AMD was hacked by a company known as Intel Broker, with them publishing that they have a lot more files than what Apple had leaked. Apple just had a few internal tools. AMD has their future AMD products, spec sheets, employee databases, customer databases, property files, ROMs, source code, firmware, and finances, as well as other employee data all being accessed by this hacking group. And according to the details that we have, it appears that this may have happened through a third party hosting partner rather than a direct breach of AMD's own facilities. A lot of this feels like it could be very similar to something that happened with the Sony hack where you had a bunch of just data that in indicated what was going to be happening in the future. Even having things like source code leaked out to the public could potentially be devastating for AMD and then getting details of their future roadmap and plans could make it very difficult for them to kind of work under the, the cover of night as they've been trying to do. However, currently at the moment, AMD has not confirmed whether or not this breach is real, if this hack is legitimate or not. They have said that they are investigating it. They're not quite sure. It's not the same as when 
when Epic Games was allegedly hacked and they came out and they were like, we don't we don't even think this is real. We, we don't know what anybody's talking about. AMD saying that they're investigating it. The fact that the same group talked about Apple and AMD and they kind of dropped it all at the same time kind of gives credence to the fact that this likely is going to be a legitimate hack. But we'll keep you updated what this means for you, the end user, in terms of if you've bought from AMD's direct store before or with regards to anything that gets leaked from their roadmap here on Hot News as all of this story develops. And you guys developed some comments from yesterday's episode of Hot News. Let's talk about that. K McCornell saying, big surprise that the Snapdragon chips don't live up to the hype. Yeah, that appears to be, uh, it, it seems like Qualcomm talked a gigantic game, right? Like that they want to be the vast majority of laptops shipped in the future. I don't know if Microsoft's there yet. I think that's the, the biggest hindrance here. However, it doesn't seem like, at least based on certain, like there's certain reviewers who are showing that in light workloads, uh, the Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm battery life is actually kind of the same. But when it comes to heavier workloads, like the, the Qualcomm laptop actually has a significantly better battery life. It's gonna be a very mixed bag to figure out exactly what laptop's right for the right person. But unfortunately, Qualcomm doesn't have the advantage of the fact that they are controlling the entire product stack from the top to the bottom whereas that's like Apple's silicon was able to take over and like the shift to arm happened so quickly because they were the only option from that point forward whereas with Qualcomm, like, are consumers really gonna buy into the Copilot Plus marketing, especially when you have things like recall being mocked mercilessly in the public square, uh, as well as the fact that, like, it's not ready at launch? Or, like, are they gonna really go to the new new when it's kind of the, the same price or more expensive than the competition when they've known AMD and Intel and they know how it's gonna work, they know how it's gonna behave and they know what they're getting out from it. And also those companies are trying to make some adjustments to make it better for the consumer anyways. I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily buy Qualcomm's hubris here. And then we got Torben Bot saying, do you think the 9900 and 9950 X3D variants will come with full 3D V cache or half like the 7000 variants? I'm not sure. So AMD has discuss the fact that they are trying to modify how 3D vCache works. They want to make it better for the 9000 series than it was on the 7000 series. I think that's the way you fix the higher end parts. I think it's a, a wiser choice to have something that's more simplified, that doesn't involve core parking, probably better for the end consumer, but uh, it's not quite clear and we'll just have to wait till AMD actually comes out with the details themselves. And then we got Sid Liv saying, you missed the opportunity to put the scene from when Harry met Sally to answer the motherboard question. That would have worked perfectly. Number one, I don't remember what motherboard question you're talking about. Number two, um, I haven't seen that movie. I don't think I'm as old as you think I am. Although Kyler thinks I'm that old. Isn't that right, buddy? 43. That's it. And then we got, M. Brozen saying those Snapdragon laptops better be dirt cheap netbook style price tags or this is going to be a massive flop. People only have one computer in their lives and they don't typically like to buy one that's crap. Yeah, they're not. They're not cheap in the slightest. I mean, I had to buy an Intel Meteor Lake and an AMD 8000 series notebook and both of those were several hundred dollars cheaper than the Snapdragon ones, especially because they've been out on the market for a little while. Um, and like we're talking comparable specs, like an OLED screen to an OLED screen, the Meteor Lake laptop was cheaper. Um, LCD to LCD, the 8845HS laptop was cheaper than the equivalent um, Qualcomm ones. They're not cheap, they're in like the 13 to $1,500 range, depending on like spec sheet and capacity you're looking at. And also actually both the Intel and the AMD laptop that I picked up both have one terabyte of storage. I don't think any of the Snapdragon ones I have have more than 512 gigs. And I think the Surface one that I bought has 256. It's 256 and it's the Snapdragon X Pro, not the Elite, and that starts at 999. And you don't even get a keyboard with that guy. It's just a tablet. That's not great. It's not, a, it's not a great value proposition, unfortunately. And then lastly, we got Arno saying that Afrikaans accent is very hard to miss from a fellow South African. Buddy, what are you talking? Arno, I'm, I'm sorry to have to call you out publicly here. Reese is an Afrikaans. That's not an Afrikaans accent, dude. That's a British South African accent. Reese is an Afrikaans. It, he doesn't like, I, it's not, I'm sorry. It's not what it is. He, he has South African accent, but nope. He can, he can speak. 
just a little Afrikaans. We'll see if Rickus can uh, coax him into it. Rickus has an Afrikaans accent, though. Isn't that right, buddy? Anyways, I'm going to be done with hot news today. I'm going to go do more testing on the, the Snapdragon laptops. Those have been uh, frustrating me. It has been an adventure trying to uh, even just get a first impressions video done. I've just been focusing on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge from Samsung, and that has been... It's been a tricky one to, to, to crack. So I'll, uh, you'll see me around for that later. Bye.